Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play the Blackwell Epiphany. When we left off last time, all kinds of things happening. Leah killed herself in front of us, we didn't save her. Now we've got, we made it into George Austin's apartment. And he's got a ghost living next door. And she's being coy about what her name is. So we are going to talk to this guy in the lobby and see if he will tell us anything about George's neighbors. Hi. Yes, miss? So. Hmm? Yeah, the roof ghost. Do you know who lived in the apartment across from George? I'm afraid not. I only started oh. working here a few months ago. That apartment has been vacant the whole time. Oh, crap. I thought we were going to do better. Um, well, do you know anything about Michael? Did George know anyone named Michael? I'm afraid I don't know. Does this phone number look familiar to you? Mm, no, that's kind no, of a weird it doesn't. question. Sorry. There are tons of case files listed here. I'm not going to ask about them one by one. All right. So this was a bit of a bust. Can you tell me anything else about the clothing drive? I don't think there's no, really anything. But left if you it. have any old clothes, feel free to give them to me. I'll put them in the box. Better not. If you did that, you wouldn't have any clothes left. <laughs> All right. That's it for the doorman. I did want to look at the box. Make sure there's not anything in here. It's full of old clothes. Yep, just old clothes. Nothing special about them. All right. All right, let's take a look here. Oh, we don't have a Sam option anymore. Well, do we want to maybe ask Sam? He said that the police will help us now. Maybe, maybe they can do like a search on Michael's number and figure out who it is. Police can do that kind of thing, right? Oh, it's you. Yeah. Sam told me you'd be swinging by. Hi. Corey, was it? No, it's Officer Palmer. All right, Officer, not Sam. Um, yeah, where is Sam? Is Detective Durkin around? I haven't seen him since yesterday. I'm sure he's wandering around somewhere. Hmm. So Durkin told me to speak to you? Yes, I heard. Congratulations, I guess. Thanks. I don't know why you're so special, but orders are orders. Need any information from us, I'll see about getting it to you. As resentfully you as possible. Me, and only me. Understand? Perfectly. So. Um, yeah, we can say sorry about Leah. I'm sorry about Leah. Don't even go there. I don't care what you saw, or what the evidence says. Leah wouldn't kill herself. And if she did, then she wasn't Leah anymore. Okay, but I mean... Like, did they say, I don't care about the evidence? That's a rather not very professional policeman sort of thing to say. Okay, um... Well, it seems odd that you're taking Leah's death rather, rather personally. Well, yeah, it's someone he knew, someone he worked with. But, um... I'm kind of scared to say, so we're good? Because, no, obviously we're not. Well, we'll just go down the so list. So are we good? Good? You don't think I still killed anyone, do you? I don't know what to believe. But Durkin vouches for you. And he now owes me a favor. A big one. So, I guess I come out ahead. All right. You seem to be taking Leah's death rather personally. The chief would agree with you. That's why I'm shackled behind this desk and set out there doing something. Well, it's probably a wise decision. To be honest, buddy, you sound like you might be letting your emotions get the best of you. Which I'm not really blaming him for. I think a lot of people would in that situation. Somebody knows something tragic happened to, but we need some level heads on the case to get to the bottom of it. Uh, do you know anything else about George Austin? So, what's the latest on George Austin? He was killed with a 22 caliber bullet. That's all we know so far. We're still talking to Leah's ex-husband, but he's got a pretty solid alibi. Yeah, I don't think we need to mess around with Emil. Um, How did Kendra die? Was that ever established? I read the autopsy report. It was definitely a bullet. Who shot a little it girl? went right through her shoulder. Clean hole all the way through. The coroner said that she bled to death, but could have survived <sighs> if she was brought to a hospital right away. Oh. I don't oh. understand this. Not at all. Did you know Emil Haskins at all? I don't know much. Just what Leah used to tell me. I got the impression he was a deadbeat. Always out of a job, always late with child support payments, things like that. Guess he doesn't have to worry about that stuff anymore. What a horrible thing to say. He's gonna be devastated. 
He's torn up that his daughter's missing, and this is going to be even worse when he learns the truth. He's not going to be relieved that he doesn't have to worry about dodging child support payments anymore. Wow. So what's the story with you and Leah? I get the impression you knew her pretty well. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I partnered with her back when I first joined the force. She taught me a lot. Everything, really. I owe her. She was a rock. She was a rising star. Why would she flip out like she did? I'm working on it, Corey. I really am. That's Officer Palmer, and I'm not holding my breath. All right. Is there anything else you can tell me about Leah? Officer Piero was juggling a demanding job, a growing daughter, and a deadbeat ex-husband. There was immense pressure on her, but I still don't buy that she would do what she did. Well, she did, whether you buy it or not. What do you know about the Grace Group? George and Leah both were members of a self-help group. They called it the Grace Group. Oh, yeah. Leah told me about that place. What'd she say? She did? Yeah, she didn't go into detail, but I know it meant a lot to her. She used to tell me that nobody could ever fall so far that they couldn't still reach for a helping hand. I'm not sure what that meant, but she used to say it all the time. Well, it meant that no matter how bad things seem, or how low it gets, you can always... There's always someone willing to help, basically. Like, it's... You're never completely hopeless and helpless. That's what she's saying. Uh, you know about... Let's get right to the number. Does this phone number mean anything to you? Not really, but I can trace it for you. Excellent. Trace it? Run the number, see who it belongs to. Within reason, anyway. Where'd you find it? I found it on George Austin's phone. Oh, we ran that number. Well, who is it? You did. Yeah. It belonged to Grace Church. Oh, really? Probably calling for donations or something. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks anyway. Yeah, Grace Church, where... Oh, George Austin, I don't know that name. We have so many parishioners. Mm-hmm. There are tons of case files to... Eh. Okay. So... Do you know anyone named Michael? Um, you're gonna have to be more specific than that. All right. Do you know if any of George Austin's neighbors died recently? It's not in any of the reports. Do you have a name? Not yet. No, not yet. But she lived across from George. Can't you look it up that way? I can't, no. Mm. The way the system works, I can only look it up by the victim's name, not address. Sorry. All right. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. Well, let's head to the church. I wonder if I should send just Joey in. I think I'll try. Okay. Father Ullman? Hi, remember me? Yes, and would you please keep your voice down? Sorry. <laughs> I'm looking for information on the Grace Group. Grace Group? Yeah. They used to meet here, in the basement. Some kind of self-help group? There are hundreds of so-called Grace Groups, and they all have meetings in the basement. You will have to be a bit more specific than that. This guy. Do you know any Michaels? In my line of work, I know more than I can count. I checked with the police. This number belongs to a phone in this church. A man I'm looking for made a phone call from this number. His name is Michael. It's very important that I find him. I'm afraid I don't know who you're talking about. I am sorry. You're lying to me. So there's this woman that might have died She's in not a penthouse know apartment. That. I'm afraid I don't know who you're talking about. I am sorry. Yeah. There are tons of case files. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. The telephone that uses this number, where is it? Why would you need to know that? Michael used the phone. Maybe he left a clue behind when he did. And he could have used any one of a dozen offices in our administration wing. Really? Over a dozen? Yes. So, if you want to locate Michael Cooper, you'll have to find another way. Michael Cooper, you say? Wait, Cooper? Pardon? You said Michael Yeah, Cooper. you did. Isn't that the gentleman you're looking for? Is it? No, I just said his name was Michael. So you did. Slip of the tongue. My apologies. It is quite late and I'm tired. Yeah. So, tell me more about this Michael Cooper, huh? You need to tell me who Michael Cooper is. I told you I don't know any Michael Cooper. Ball. So, whoever he is, he appears to know a lot about what's going on. He even knew about me and where I was the other night. Father Ullman referred to Michael as Michael Cooper. It could have been a slip of the tongue, but I'm not sure. No, it wasn't. 
So. Okay, this you is just to gonna. To that tactic ain't yep. working, sweetheart. You need to come at this some other way. Yeah, I know. Well, thanks. I'll be going. Stay safe. All right. Can we combine any of our notes? He was part of the Grace Group. Or. Hmm. Is there anything to do with that? Hmm. No. No. Okay. Michael Cooper. Huh. So Michael Cooper was a priest. Interesting. Mm hmm. Well, well. New York Theological Seminary alumni. Let's. Excuse me. Yes. So, uh, I know he was a priest. Michael Cooper. He's a priest too, isn't he? So? So, it's a pretty big coincidence, wouldn't you say? I... Um... Please stop lying to me. I'm not lying. You're, You're not, not telling, telling me the, the truth. truth either, are you? I made a promise. To who? He came to me scared, begging me to protect him, to give him sanctuary. He was ranting. I should have turned him away, but we roomed together at the seminary. We were close friends once. What could I do? You can take me to him. He's raving. He's mad. He, he says he's in a battle for his very soul. Is this true? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. yes, it is. <sighs> he's in the school. It's closed for the winter break, so it seemed like a good a place as any to hide him. Here's a key. The entrance is around the corner. Please, do whatever you must. Just don't come back here. Don't worry. Now she's... So, thrown out of the church. <laughs> I suppose with our record, it was only a matter of time. The entrance to the school is around the block. Let's go. The way she says it, and he's all, don't come back here. I won't. Almost like she's kind of mad at him. But really, that conversation made me feel a lot better towards that guy. He sounds like he's just trying to help a friend who's obviously in a lot of trouble and he's not really sure what's going on or who he can trust, but he understands that the situation is dire. So, okay. I forgive him for being so shady all along. Alright, what do we got here? No need to pay attention to that. There aren't any cars out tonight. And that's pretty well it. So, in we go. I know I could get Joey's take on the sign, but I'm not the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. This is interesting. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me I'm in the presence finish. of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, now I shall he's just repeating. So... Lie down in green pastures. I think he's reciting the he Psalm of David. Still From the books I've read, it's supposed soul. to guard against evil. He well, it's accomplishing something. I mean, look at this glowing circle sin. around him. It's dark up there. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh. You! Michael? Stay back, bestower. I've got a gun. What? Just a second. I'm a good person. I said stay back! I'm back. I'm here to help. Please, I'm here to help. Help? Oh, I wish that was true. How much help did you give George, or Leah, or the others? Hey, I tried, man. And, um, which others? others? How many of you are there? You don't even know that. No, it's... You don't know a thing, do you? This wasn't the plan. Plan? Well... Yes. Our brilliant plan. Made without we giving me any heads up. to escort our souls to the next world. Protect us from this force that is after us. Instead, you let us be destroyed. No, you let you be destroyed. You think I wanted this to happen? People dying, souls torn apart? You think I want this? Of course not, it's just... So stop blaming well, me. Look at what we've been reduced to. I'm sorry. Whatever is going on, it's new. 
I've never seen anything like it before. I see. And what about him? Huh? Your friend. The man behind you. He hasn't said a word since you walked in here. Didn't realize you could see him. Uh, me? D do you mean me? Yes, you. Don't look so surprised. How else could I have known who you were? Now get out of here. You've been nothing but trouble ever since George went to look for I you. haven't done anything to anybody. really want to call his bluff, which is probably really dumb to a, a terrified man with a glowing circle around him holding a gun. Um, I am so sick of guns. Yeah, well, I'm sick of all this. Temper, my host. Huh? That voice. It can't be. I told you to stay in the other room. Yes, my host, I know. But I had to intervene. These two know me, if I may. Fine. Fine. Just make it quick. I'm losing concentration. Malone, Blackwell, what a pleasant surprise to see you both again. Yeah, surprise is the word. Yeah. What the hell are you doing here? Is it not obvious? You freed me, Malone. Brought me back into this world. And as befits all of our kind, I had a host waiting for me. And so I have returned to my former duties. Look, as much as I am touched by this reunion, I need to focus. Well, just ignore us then. We should all converse outside. Fine. Outside. Just... Leave me in peace. Thank you, my host. So, um... Hmm. You're a bestower, too? What gave it away? The spirit guide who won't leave me alone? Look, maintaining this circle leaves me a bit... cranky. Sorry. If you can help, great. If not, well, I've made my peace with it. Just go talk to her. She's outside. I need to concentrate. What do you I think I'm going to be able to do that you couldn't do yourself? Thy rod and thy staff pretty much the same thing, buddy. You prepare it. Like, here he is lightning to me that I didn't save all of his friends and everybody else. And it's, you've been a bestower the whole time, dude. Why didn't you save him? Anyhow. Uh, Madeline, strange to see you. I'm kind of wondering if saving you in last game was really the uh, right move, because it's awfully suspicious. Blackwell? Malone? It's been a long time since we've been able to converse. So... <laughs> call me Rosa- not call me Rosa, call me Rosangela. She's not quite sure how she's feeling about Madeline here. Uh, from the top of the list- It's been almost six months since Joey freed you. How come we're only seeing you now? I admit the transition hasn't been... pleasant. I have had three hosts since returning to this world. How? The first was an old man on the edge of death. He lingered for six weeks before finally succumbing to the inevitable. When the old man passed, I became bound to his niece for a time. She ran every time she saw me. I tried to keep my distance, give her time to adjust. But in the end, she fell down the stairs in an attempt to flee. The poor woman died, and I was passed to her brother, the man inside. Hmm. That could be true. Could be just a bit suspicious, but... Do you know what's going on? Why are these souls being attacked? I do not know. I wish I did. Like you, we saw it happen. We saw a soul being torn apart and could do nothing. I'm afraid my host became a little... unreasonable after that. Well, it's the kind of thing that would unsettle anybody. So, uh, what did George think we could do? Why was George looking for me? We needed a bestower. A proper bestower. My host and I were not up to the task. Mm. Eh? Well. It might be due to my time in the void. It might be because my host's soul has been marked by whatever is out there. But in any case, our abilities are limited. Uh. We cannot even help lost souls move on as you do. Oh. We can see them and talk to them. But that is all. Hence why we needed you. Lucky us. Okay. Alright, I'm feeling some compassion for them now because they've got this ability to interact with ghosts but they can't even really help them. That sucks. Um... Okay, so... You should really call me Rosangela. Forgive me. When you're as old as I am, all the names blur together. So I tend to address those I speak to by their family name. It is just... easier that way. And less painful. I'm afraid it is a habit that is difficult to break. Okay, so yeah, you use this distancing, la distancing language on purpose, but... The people you interact with don't really like it, and I think that would trump your own 
personal discomfort or whatever. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like that kind of statement, maybe I should feel sorry for her, but instead I'm thinking, get over yourself, Madeline. Instead of calling your host your host, if they don't want to be your host, just get to know them, call them by a name. Even though you're old, you're still going to presumably be with this person the rest of their lifetime, which in most cases I would think would be long. You've just had a string of bad luck recently, so you say. And just call Rosangela Rosangela. Like, is it really that hard? Obviously, she recognized us as soon as she saw us. Oh, Blackwell, Malone. Like, it's easier to remember Blackwell and Malone than it is to remember Rosangela and Joey. All right. I guess we'll be nice. How you doing? So how'd you like being on the outside, as it were? I imagine it's better than being trapped wherever you were. I had thought, I had hoped, that I would pass on. Oh. That being brought back to the mortal world would force me to obey immortal laws. Instead, I... Oh. Same old, same old, huh? It is not to be. I have returned to my former duties, therefore I must have further work to do. But yes, it is nicer than being trapped in the void. Did I ever thank you, Malone? Not as such, no. Well, I must rectify that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Any time. Alright, uh, so what can we do? So what can we do? We don't even know what's going on. <sighs> Our theory was that you could help move these poor souls into the next world before they were destroyed. Yeah, that's not working out. But it appears that it did not achieve the desired result. You could say that, yeah. You must investigate. My host and I are restricted, but you two are not. If anyone can help uncover why these poor spirits are being attacked and stop it, it is you. Well, I'll do what I can. Um, what do you know about this Grace Group? Do you know anything about this Grace Group? I know that it meant a great deal to my host, as well as his friends. Whatever happened at those meetings, it greatly improved their lives. But obviously, it came at a cost. Uh-huh. So... There's a ghost haunting the empty apartment across from George Austin. I see. Well, you know your duty. Go and save it. Nah, yeah, didn't really expect her to know anything about it. There's a ghost haunting the empty- I see. No, no, I- Michael What Cooper. can you tell me about Father Michael? Cooper is my host. We have not had the time to get to know each other better. Is he always this ornery? Do have some pity for him. He has lost his uncle, his sister, and several of his friends. He okay, has been true. To accept the spirit world and the possible loss of his own soul, all within the span of a few weeks. If anyone deserves some understanding, it is he. Okay, she's right, and I do have to wonder, Father Michael, being part of, you know, an organized religion. Like obviously, religion is a very important part part of his life. Uh, how does he feel having to accept the reality of ghosts and that he is himself a medium? It seems like that would cause some turmoil. Do you know a place called the Karth House? I'm afraid I do not. Alright. Why do you let Father Michael push you around like that? It is what my host wishes. So? Simply that. I must do what my host commands. Huh. Right, seriously. What's the story? No story, Malone. If my host wishes me to leave him alone, I leave him alone. You choose to leave him alone, or...? That actually works? Of course. It is my duty to do so. So, Joey, could... No! <laughs> of course, some of us take our duties more seriously than... Alright, it's a personal choice. Okay, she just gained a lot of respect, because she is at least... I, I, I still don't like that she insists on the my host, and Blackwell, and Malone, and all that, but... She's given her host space when he asked for it, which, as Joey is showing us, obviously doesn't have to be something that... She's she's not, like, compelled to do it. She's doing it because she wants to. So, that's pretty good. All right, well, let's go back I in. I suppose we'll talk to you soon. Of course. All right, let's go heckle your host a little bit. Actually, I'm going to try to be nice to him. Dude, I know you are concentrating, but I really need to know Father about Michael? the Grace Group. Yeah? Okay. So you're working with Madeline? Working? I guess you could call it that. Well, I've been too busy being scared to give it any serious thought. So why'd you send Madeline outside? Her presence disturbs my concentration. So she's keeping as far away as she can until this is resolved. What about us? All right. You're the ones who are going to save my hide. For you, I'll make the extra effort to focus. All right, all right. So... This doesn't seem like really the appropriate thing to say at the time. I mean, there's much more serious things going on. Or whatever might appear at any point to rip his soul in half. But, uh, can't believe there's another medium in New York. I can't believe there's another medium in New York. Medium? Sorry, I mean bestower. <laughs> I've been calling myself medium for so long I sometimes forget. 
Uh huh. I mean, it's not like I have anyone to talk to about this stuff. Well, nobody living anyway. Hey, look, I'd love to swap ghost stories with you, but it takes all my concentration to maintain the circle. Fair point. Right. Sorry. Maybe we'll have coffee later. You know, after we save your soul and everything. <laughs> sure. Sounds great. I happen to have a cup of coffee on hand right now. It must be so cold and gross by now. Uh, so, about this uh, gray circle. What is this circle? Or, no, this oh, circle, this. I guess. Madeline taught me how to do it. You never taught me anything like that, Joey. spiritual from getting to me. It takes some concentration to maintain, so I'm sorry if I seem a bit inhospitable. Joey, this seems like a really useful thing to learn. How come you never taught me about this? He probably doesn't know. So, how did you learn what was happening? How did you learn what was happening? You mean that our souls were being taken? Yeah. Yeah. I... it was a few weeks ago. I was at the bedside of a friend. Jeffrey, his name was. He went to the Grace Group meetings back in the day. Like me. He had been in a car accident. Hit and run. He was dying, and he wanted me there. And when he died, I saw him. That's a bit disturbing, his huh? being torn apart. He screamed. I'll never forget that scream. I know. I saw it too. Anyway, with Madeline's help, I began looking into other members of the group and learned it was happening to all of us. You know the rest. Yeah, but I really don't know about this group in the first place. Could you tell me about the Grace Group? It was some kind of self-help group? <sighs> about 20 years ago, I was a very different person. I suppose you could call me an alcoholic, although I wouldn't have said it at the time. Then I saw an ad in the newspaper. It promised to help folks like me find their way. It seemed to be some kind of hippie self-help group, but I went to a meeting anyway. I don't remember much about the meetings, but somehow... I had discovered that going to seminary school was something I had to do. It all made sense. Made sense? Hmm. I just knew it was what I was meant to be doing. And I was right. So he was meant to go to seminary school, and Leah was meant to be a police officer, huh? Did you know that there's a ghost across the roof from George's apartment? Really? Do you know anything about it? Sadly, no. Aww. I'm sorry. I was hoping that we'd get lucky and he'd know who used to live there. What about yourself? Is there anything we should know? Look, you're not exactly catching me at my best here. I can't do anything. I'm not a true bestower like you are. Madeline says she's been weakened, or I've been weakened, or something. She doesn't know. Believe me, if I could do what you can do, I'd be out there trying to stop this. But I believe I you. So all I can do is hide. All right. There are tons of case files left. All right. So. Tell me more about these Grace Group meetings. What happened at these meetings? That's just it. I don't remember. That's strange. Until recently, I never questioned it before. How messed up is that? I'd go, I'd sit down, and leave. I'd meet with the other members for coffee afterward. What on earth did we talk about? We must have found something. Who led but the I meetings? I do remember a man. Benjiro. Ah. He ran the meetings. Benjiro? Yeah, Japanese guy. I don't remember anything else about him. Okay. So, who else was in your group? How many people went to these meetings? There were six of us. You already know about Leah and George and myself. The others are dead. Who were they? Does it matter? They are dead. Their souls were taken. Even still, tell yeah, me. Yeah, it could matter. <sighs> Jeffrey Dutta, Heather Goffstein, Peter Fielding. Okay. So, anything else you can tell me about Benjiro? So, the man who ran the Grace Group meetings was named Benjiro. Yeah, Japanese guy. I don't remember anything else about him. Alright, what about Jeffrey? Could you tell me about Jeffrey? God, Jeffrey Dutta. Talk about transfiguration. When he walked into that Grace Group meeting, I thought he was in the wrong place. I mean, the guy was a Wall Street broker for crying out loud. He could have bought the church and everything in it. But he later confessed that he tried to kill himself. Twice. Oh, so what happened to him? He became a professional dog walker. Can you believe it? He used to pocket millions a year, plus bonuses. Then he was picking up dog crap for $25 an hour and smiling about it. Hey, if it made him happy. He was hit by a car crossing the street. A hit and run. I was at his bedside when he died. Madeline had been around for about a month at that point, so I saw his spirit rise from his body. I thought I was supposed to help him, but instead I... You know what happened next. Yep, alright. Peter Fielding? Could you tell me about Peter? Peter Fielding, yes. I never had much contact with him. He died several months ago. I'm afraid it's 
too late for him. You saw his soul being taken? Well, no. He died before Madeline came into my life, so I can't say for sure. But it seems but he likely. he went to race group meetings, and he's dead. What other conclusion can I reach? All right, and what about Heather? Tell me about Heather Goffstein. You said she was a member of your group. Yes, she was one of us. I asked George if he knew where she was. He told me she was dead. I'm afraid it's too late for her. Is this like Peter? Did you actually see her soul being taken? No, I didn't. Thank heaven I didn't. Seeing it happen once is more than I can take. Well, to be... We gotta think critically here, though. It, we can't say for certain that Peter and Heather's souls were taken. Yes, George, Leah, and Jeffrey's were, so it, it seems likely that there's probably were, unless somehow they're to blame for what's going on here. Although obviously Benjiro seems like the more likely one they could be in league with Benjiro. It would be nice to know exactly where they held the meetings. I kind of want to check out the room, but... How exactly did Peter Fielding die? Why? Are you going to try and find his spirit? Maybe. There is no spirit. It's gone. You don't know that. You said it yourself. You don't know for sure. <sighs> it was some kind of accident. I'm not sure of the details. I read about his death in the obituaries. Too late for his funeral, sadly, but I said a prayer for him. All right. What about Heather? How did Heather Goffstein die? I'm afraid I don't know. George was the one who kept in touch with her. He told me she died, but he didn't tell me how or when. I suppose it doesn't matter anymore. Hmm. All, All right. right, Michael. We're going to go. But we'll be back. Godspeed to the both of you. He makes me lie down in green right. pastures. That's far enough! Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. It's me. Sorry. Bestower or no bestower, I'm taking no chances. Get back. Ugh. <sighs> Fine. I'm not trying to get close to you. I'm just trying to go upstairs. He beside the still waters. He restores oh, yeah. my soul. He leads me. All right. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. Um, Joey? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Oh. He makes me what lie the down hell was that? Pastures. Protective circle. He Keeps spirits from getting in. Waters. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, bully for you. Me in the path yeah, I don't want to actually get to you. I just want to go upstairs. Well, I'm that's not happening, so. The of the shadow of death. All right, then. I will fear My thought was he might try to wave the gun at Joey and be like, well, what are you going to do? You can't shoot him, but... Madeline. The last time we met, she helped me out of the void. I suppose I owe her one. I think maybe I'm being too harsh on her. I don't, I don't think she's... I don't think she's anything to do with this. Hey, Maddie? Yes, Malone. Well, if you're gonna call me Malone, I can call you Maddie. It's fair. So, what do you know about this Benjiro guy? So, this Benjiro fella, he ran the Grace Group? My host has said as much to me, yes. Sadly, he does not remember much about him. Alright, uh, what about Jeffrey? Did you know Jeffrey Dutta? I'm afraid not. Peter? Do you know anything about this Peter Fielding guy? I have never met him. He passed away before I became bonded with my host. And you're Michael not going to know about Heather either. Lost cause. He might be right, but he may not be. If his spirit still exists, you are the ones to find it. And Do you know anything about this Heather Goffstein lady? I know of her, but I have never met her. She passed away before my host and I became bonded. I never encountered her spirit. Michael seems to think she's a lost cause. It is certainly possible. But I refuse to lose hope until I see the evidence. I'm with you on that. All right. Right. We're gonna take off, plan our next move. Of course. So, let's look some stuff up. Heather. Oh, steam. Was it I before E? I know, I just had it and I didn't. Okay, either way is not doing it. Uh, what else do we have? Jeffrey Dutta? No. I gotta look. That's not what I meant to do. I gotta look at my notes again to remember who else we got. So. Oh, I spelled Jeffrey wrong. Benjiro and Peter Fielding. Ah, I did it again. Okay. Ugh, and so I accidentally typed in Peter Fielding, and I forgot that the P is still set up as my uh, hot button for recording. So, Peter Fielding did pull something up, so he posted obituary. 
Peter Fielding, 58, passed away last night after suffering a fatal accident. Peter was a self-described health nut and personal trainer whose facility, Fields Gym, was well-loved by many in the Murray Hill neighborhood. He will be missed. So, Fields Gym. Okay, I think we've got it. And then, um, Jeff, free, like that. Da -da. No good either, but that's okay. Gym. Excellent. 24 hour. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wind the episode down here. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back and next time we will investigate Fields Gym. See if we can make any progress here. At least we've got, uh, we've got a whole lot more notes. So we've, we've got some leads to go on.